It's Daily and Sunday, Los Angeles Times. It's 5.30 at KECA, AM and FM, Los Angeles. If it's 3% you want most, open a savings account at Coast. Yes, Coast Federal Savings pays you more. 8th and Broadway, 2nd floor. So if you want earnings and safety, Coast Federal Savings is the place for your savings account. You see, beginning July 1st, your savings account at Coast Federal pays you 3%. And when you open a savings account at Coast, it's protected by federal insurance and over $50 million in assets. Find out about higher earnings, greater protection. Visit Coast Federal's banking quarters at 307 West 8th Street, just west of Broadway. Or phone Michigan 4343 and ask for Ray Smith. That's Michigan 4343. Coast Federal Savings is the largest savings and loan association in the West. Remember, if it's 3% you want most, open a savings account at Coast. Coast Federal Savings pays you more. Eighth and Broadway, second floor. Safest and the best, largest in the West. Coast Federal Savings. C-O-A-S-T, Coast Federal Savings. The following program is transcribed from an earlier network broadcast. And now ABC brings you a special on-the-spot broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking to you from Cheyenne, Wyoming, a town whose residents woke up this morning to find that their city is changing its name. This town, capital of the state, is being renamed today in honor of one of America's best-loved and respected characters. Since morning, a tremendous celebration has been in progress, a celebration which has moved from the downtown area to the grounds in front of the state capitol building. We've set up special broadcasting facilities on the rotunda just outside the entrance to the state house, where we're right in the thick of things. And it's from this on-the-scene spot that we're bringing you this special ABC broadcast. From our position on the reviewing stand, we've been watching a parade of gaily plumed floats, horsemen, bands, cowboys, bugle corps, troops with color guard, Indians, and pretty girls with typical Western costumes. The parade, headed by the mayor and his guests, has recently ended, and the governor and scores of other prominent citizens are waiting right here at the State House to receive the nationally famous guests in whose honor the city is taking a new name. I'm going to turn the microphone over at this point to our special ABC announcer, Star Yellen who will bring the mayor, governor, and Cheyenne special guests to the microphone just as soon as they appear. Take it, Star. Hi, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can hear me. This is the biggest, the wildest celebration I've ever seen. Are, are we still on the air? I hope we are, because we've really got something here with all this terrific clamor going on. We've got our microphone planted right here in the middle. Oh, I give up. I, I have to give up. Still help me. Well, folks, anyway, as you can see the crowds and the excitement out here today, you think with this is the 4th of July, New Year's Eve, and DJ Day all rolled into one big, huge celebration. Yes, everybody seems to be here. Kids by the hundred, cowboys from the range, Indians from nearby reservations, sheep ranchers. I see a couple right over there. Cattlemen, soldiers from Fort Warren, state and city officials, old-timers who still remember Kit Carson and Calamity Jane. There are Sioux Braves in tribal dress, the most colorful assemblage of Western characters you've ever seen. They've been parading through the streets of Cheyenne for the past hour, and now they're gathered here on the vast lawn in front of Wyoming's beautiful state capitol built. They're waiting for the guest of honor, the man for whom the celebration is held, and in whose honor the city is changing its name. This man is so famous that almost any boy or girl in the country could quickly identify him on sight. Now, he and Mayor Nelson of Cheyenne are in the State House now, where they've gone to pay their respects to Governor Hunt. We've been told, uh, yes, we have been told that both will be out in just a moment, together with the Governor. Now, let's see. I think in just a moment here, we'll have them right here. Uh, yes, I can see hear the crowd now. Uh, here they are. Uh-oh. Yeah, here's the Mayor coming out of the State House right now. Mr. Mayor... Oh, uh, Mr. Mayor Nelson, right over here, sir, right in front of the microphone. Uh, Mr. Mayor, let me say that never before have I seen such a genuine and enthusiastic reception given like that shown today. You know, I can hardly believe my eyes on the whole thing. Well, speaking for my fellow townsmen and myself, Mr. Elman, I can't say I believe mine either. It's the biggest day for us since back when Wild Bill Hickok, Flamity Jane, Kit Carson, and some of the famous old-timers used to blow into town. And don't think for a minute that there aren't half a dozen old-timers standing right here in the crowd. Right this minute. Uh-huh. Well, we can certainly believe you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I've seen a lot of mighty colorful old-timers here in Cheyenne. And, of course, 
Some pretty sharp young timers here, too, like yourself, if I may say so. I understand you're a veteran of the last war. You were a pilot in the Army Air Corps, weren't you? Uh, yes, that's right. I spent five years in the service, but about 20 months of that time spent overseas in the ETO. And as a photographic pilot, flying B-25s, 17s, and 29. Uh-huh. Mr. Mayor, uh, as a young timer, just how old are you, sir? Uh, just... 32. 32 and Mayor of Cheyenne. Well, I'd say that you young timers are giving the old timers a mighty close race when it comes to doing things in a big way. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Let's pause. Look who's coming out of the State House. It's the man in whose honor the city is changing its name. He's walking over toward our microphone. Here he is, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Fellow citizens, in honor of the 15th anniversary of the Lone Ranger, a man known and respected throughout the West for his unswerving efforts in upholding law, order, and fair play, we today are doing something that no other town in the history of the state has ever done. By virtue of the authority as mayor, I have proclaimed the name Cheyenne, be officially changed to Lone Ranger Frontier Town, and I have made the Lone Ranger. Honorary Mayor, I will now read the official proclamation. Whereas the Lone Ranger has come to town, now therefore, by virtue of the power invested in me as Mayor of Cheyenne, I do hereby change the name of this city to Lone Ranger Frontier Town. Simultaneously, I relinquish my rights and title of office and appoint the Lone Ranger Mayor of the city. In witness whereof, I have hereunto fixed my hand and seal this 30th day of June and the year 1948. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ex-Mayor. <laughs> and thanks to the people of Cheyenne for this great honor at the beginning of the 15th anniversary of the Lone Ranger program. I want to say that whoever first referred to Cheyenne as the magic city of the plains certainly knew what he was talking about. Because I know of no other city which has retained quite the same atmosphere of adventure and hearty western spirit as you folks have. I also want to say right off that wild horses couldn't keep me from being here for your nationally famous Frontier Day celebration during the last week in July. And now, uh, as official mayor of Lone Ranger Frontier Town, I assume I have the right to make an official proclamation in honor of the Lone Ranger's 15th anniversary, don't I, Mr. Mayor? You certainly do, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Very well, then. As mayor of Lone Ranger Frontier Town... I declare official thanks to my young friends everywhere who have made contributions to the National Society for Crippled Children. Contributions which will help less fortunate boys and girls walk, walk, and play again. As you may have heard me say before, the best way to help make ourselves better is by helping others. All right, now I'd like you to meet two young friends here. Little Nancy Gore, age six, from Salt Lake City, and Tommy Sykes of Grand Junction, Colorado. These two young friends, together with other boys and girls here in the audience, have been appointed special deputies to help Sheriff Tuck and me preserve law and order in Lone Ranger Frontier Town. And I want each of you special deputies and any other boy or girl who would like to be a Lone Ranger deputy to raise your right hand and repeat after me this Pledge of Allegiance. Are you ready, Rangers? All right. I do solemnly pledge to place God and country above all else. 
To honor my father and mother or guardian. To be honest and truthful. To pledge my hand to the weak. To pledge my heart to the helpless. To pledge my life to my fellow men. Welcome, Rangers. You are the first of the official Lone Ranger deputies. And now, and now for my second official proclamation as mayor of Lone Ranger Frontier Town. I officially declare that the rest of this day be a town-wide holiday. And you, young official Lone Ranger deputies, it's up to you to help to see that the day will be long remembered. And here is Captain Ozzy Waters and his Colorado Rangers playing Oh Susanna. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here come several of the Lone Ranger's young followers, and they're carrying a mammoth greeting card. This card is about five by eight feet in size, I'd say. It has been signed by practically every boy and girl in town. Now, Deputy Jack Carlberg is going to present the card to the Lone Ranger on behalf of the boys and girls of Lone Ranger Frontier Town. Jack? Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of the Lone Ranger's 15th anniversary, we take great, we take pleasure in presenting our new honorary mayor with this greeting card signed by his loyal followers. Congratulations, Lone Ranger, on your 15th anniversary and greetings from us all. Boys and girls, I want to say that this is one of the nicest tributes I have ever received. Thank you, Jack. And all you boys and girls who have signed this memorable card, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Jack, who would you say was probably the best-known man in Wyoming? That's easy. The best-known man in Wyoming is Governor Hunt. Everyone knows Governor. Yes, you're right, Jack. And here he comes now, the Honorable Lester C. Hunt, Governor of the State of Wyoming. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Ex-Mayor. Distinguished citizens and guests. I suppose now, just as soon as I get back to the governor's mansion, that the children in my neighborhood are going to be after me to declare an official holiday just like the Lone Ranger did so easily. And if I thought that we were all going to have as much fun as we're having here today, well, I think I probably would. Seriously, though, days like this, and we have time to relax and to join our friends and our neighbors, 
you are a very definite part of the friendly life of Wyoming. But I mention the friendly spirit of Wyoming only for those in the radio audience who have never met us. I don't have to tell the hundreds of thousands of Americans who have visited us as tourists driving through our wonderful Yellowstone National Park or camping or fishing in our national forest. These Americans who have been here know that Wyoming's friendliness is as generous and as picturesque as the misty falls that drops from the sheer walls of Yellowstone. <laughs> Thank you, Governor Hunt. Thank you, gentlemen. And now, friends, I'd like you to meet another very distinguished man who is here for today's celebration. He is Mr. Leslie Perrin, president of General Mills. Mr. Perrin. <laughs> it's a thrill to me to be here for today's celebration. As a visitor, I can vouch for every word that Governor Hunt said about Wyoming's friendliness. Also, I want to add my congratulations, Lone Ranger, on your 15th anniversary, which starts today, and mention that grocers all over America plan to help you celebrate your anniversary throughout the month of July. I would also like to commend the boys and girls who listen to the Lone Ranger program. Many of these boys and girls sent in their pennies, nickels, and dimes to the National Society for Crippled Children to help less fortunate boys and girls to run and play again. And I, too, would like to make a personal contribution to this worthy cause. Please accept my personal donation to the fund which the Lone Ranger Program is giving to the National Society for Crippled Children. Thank you, Mr. Perrin, on behalf of the National Society for Crippled Children. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. Perrin has just handed me his personal check for $1,000. This donation, together with those of the boys and girls who listen to the Lone Ranger program, will certainly aid the fine work which the Society is doing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's another very special guest. He is Mr. Mark Wood, president of the American Broadcasting Company, the network over which the Lone Ranger program is heard. Mr. Woods, if you please. Folks, as a tribute to the Lone Ranger program, at the beginning of its 15th anniversary on the air, the American Broadcasting Company wishes to make this award. Know ye by these presents that whereas the American Broadcasting Company is desirous of giving recognition to the merit and the solid accomplishments of the Lone Ranger, 
as well as its fine value of entertainment. Now, therefore, be it known that the Lone Ranger is cited and presented with this scroll for distinguished achieve achievement in radio on the occasion of the 15th anniversary of its first broadcast by the American Broadcasting Company. Mr. Lone Ranger... My sincere thanks to you, Mark Woods, and to ABC. I am delighted to accept this award, not as a personal one to myself, Grace Beamer, but to the legendary character, the Lone Ranger, whose thrilling air adventures I portray, and for those men behind the scenes who have made the Lone Ranger program possible. I refer to the director of the Lone Ranger program, Mr. Charles Livingston, the chief of the writing staff, Mr. Fran Stryker, and to the producer and creator of the Lone Ranger program, Mr. George W. Trendle. Now, these men are here from Detroit for today's celebration, and on their behalf, as well as for myself, I wish to thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> celebration for the Lone Ranger could forget his faithful Indian friend and companion, Tonto. In fact, the Lone Ranger from long association with Tonto has demonstrated another American ideal, the way that thousands of pioneers lived on friendly terms with their Indian neighbors, helped them, and were in turn helped by the Indians. As indication of this mutual regard, of the great Sioux tribe. Yeah. It is a pleasure for me to see the Lone Ranger, the White Warrior. We think it is a wonderful thing to be in here to see him and to see him as one of our own men. A warrior in our Indian race of people. It's something to be proud of. We have wonderful boys that went to war and they have done wonderful work. And I, the boys at home, the little boys, all watch the Lone Ranger and praise him for the wonderful things that he has done, the kindness that he has showed to humanity. And I am very pleased, on behalf of my Indians, that they are rare, proud to meet the Lone Ranger. On the behalf of this thing, for the you know, crippled children, I have worked on a march of dying, and nothing just grieves me to see these children. I wish them all luck so, so someday and may they be rid of this here paralysis. That's my one prayer to Almighty God with sincerity. I thank you. Thank you for that wonderful greeting, Princess Blue Water. And I hope that you convey my own sincere greetings to the Sioux Nation as warmly Ochichita. Well, if it be you are going, we will miss your bright eyes and sweet smiles. Or they say you are taking the sunshine that brightens our pathway of wild. And sit by my side ere you leave me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. But remember the Red River Valley and the cowboy who loves you so true. Go to your home by the ocean. You never.
Just to forget this sweetheart That we spent in that red river valley And the world we exchanged with the song And now, ladies and gentlemen, as a final epic tribute to the Lone Ranger, the great American poet Edgar Guest has written a poem which puts into simple, heartfelt words the feeling and sentiment we all have for this great champion of friendship and justice, whom we are honoring today and all through July on his 15th anniversary. Edgar Guest's poem is entitled, Fifteen Years of the Lone Ranger, and we have asked Governor Hunt to read it to you now. Fifteen years since the first brave deed, and Silver's glorious burst of speed. Fifteen years that have gone and come, and the gallant Lone Ranger still rides on, calm, courageous, and unafraid, loved and admired by the friends he's made. Fifteen years, and the boys of them are now out in the world today as men. Many are fathers with children small who wait, as did they for the ranger's call. With eyes aglow, they sit about a high hole silver with him they shout. Fifteen years of riding hard with the faithful Tonto standing guard. Fifteen years filled with dangers grim, but never a bad man mastered him. The good upheld and the evil stayed, and always the law of our land obeyed. Lone Ranger, friend of the poor and weak, the first to answer when the help they seek. Horse and rider who take the trail with high host silver, we mustn't fail. And always at night, when the races run, the boy and the pride of a good deed done. Lone Ranger, never a stain appears on that record of yours through 15 years. Our boyhood has learned through peril and strife with courage to cherish our way of life. And because of your teaching, our land will be forever the home of the brave and the free. Today's program, brought to you direct from Cheyenne, Wyoming, which was officially proclaimed Lone Ranger Frontier Town, has marked the opening of the Lone Ranger's 15th anniversary, which will be celebrated in grocery stores all over America during the month of July. The regular broadcast of the Lone Ranger program will be heard at the usual time tonight, and will, of course, come direct from this city. By special request, tonight's Lone Ranger program will retell the story of how Tonto and the Lone Ranger first met, and how the Lone Ranger got his name. This program was transcribed from an earlier network broadcast. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. It is 6 o'clock at KECA, AM and FM, Los Angeles.